Alright, so this was a project I did a while ago at Rycote Wood before the coronavirus hit us. Everyone in our year was given a plank of wood and we got to choose from soft maple, red oak or cherry and I chose soft maple. We had a very small amount of wood, as you can see there, it was just one board and we had to make anything from it. Uh, well, actually our brief was something containers. So either it had to hold something, store something, um, contain it, anything like that. And I decided to make a tray. So this project involved a lot of planning. Because we only had one piece of wood, we had to really work out how we're going to fit all the components onto one board. And as you can see, I marked out some voids and some knots in the plank that I needed to cut away. So that already um, made me lose some part of the plank in this project. But I managed to fit it all in. Now obviously this was an experiment to see what you could make with a small amount of material. If I were to make this tray again, I would have done it differently. I had to laminate some pieces together to get a thicker board for the handle. In the real version, I would have just used two inch thick maple instead of laminating it. And now I'm ready to cut the groove in the side uh, with the spindle molder. Such a valuable tool, this machine. I definitely want to get one. It makes uh, cutting grooves like this so much easier than using a table saw or, or any other method. The most interesting bit about this design uh, was I kind of opened up the ends like an accordion. There are a few ways of doing that. You could create a number of curves in one board and then bend them out by with steam bending. But an easier method is just cutting one piece into strips, gluing it in the middle, and then opening up the ends. The benefit of doing it this way is you can pre-sand the insides before you laminate the pieces back together. If you curved it and then um, steamed you know the ends out then it'd be very difficult to sand those inside gaps but anyway that's the method i chose to do uh, lamination and all the joinery in this tray is hand cut so the bottom of the tray is dovetailed because i wanted to add some strength the accordion kind of rails you could call them are sort of attached with housing joints and as you can see there, I cut that with the dovetail saw, removed the waste quickly with a fret saw, and I'm just cleaning up the bottom with a chisel. Now, even though the ends are curved upwards, um, the small area that it joins into the handle is virtually straight. So I didn't need to worry about creating a curved mortise. I can just do a straight cut with normal dovetail saw, and then um, you know the bend will start after the join, if that makes sense. So I had to be very accurate with the cutting because I wanted the slats to fit in straight from the saw curve. And as you can see there, I got a very nice tight join. And here's what I'm talking about when I said I didn't have a thick enough piece of wood. So these handles, the end pieces, I had to rip in half at a diagonal. And then I'm gluing the smaller section on top of the larger one to create sort of an arc shape for the handle, uh, which needed a lot of shaping and sanding after, but this just allowed me to uh, get enough width uh, to create that curve of the handle. So I'm just sanding the outside face on the belt sander, because it's easier to do that now before I you know, glue the whole tray together, and later on I shape the other side with a spindle molder. We were allowed to add a little bit more wood for this project, so obviously I'm making a tray. I did not have enough wood to make the bottom of the tray, so I could use some MDF and uh, veneer that. Now the groove I cut into the soft maple, I made sure the saw blade I was using was the thickness of the MDF plus the veneer that I'm gluing on, so I didn't need to do a few passes. I could just slot it in straight away. And I chose to use cherry as the veneer of choice because it will give a very nice contrast with the maple. It's still quite a light wood, depending on what finish you put on it. Cherry will uh, darken up a lot, but um, I'm going for a lemon oil finish, uh, which is quite light, so it will just only darken it slightly, but still give a nice contrast between the maple and the cherry. So now I'm assembling the tray together. First I assembled the bottom, which is the handles and the two kind of bottom rails with the groove in. Now I could add glue all the way along that groove because it's MDF, 
I don't need to worry about uh, expansion or contractions. The bottom of the tray won't move at all, so that's uh, one less worry I have. So I just clamp that in all directions to get a nice tight joint. And uh, the joinery came out really nice in this project. Uh, at the end I'll do some close-up shots so you can see that. And now it's time to glue in the curved rails. I don't really know what to call them, but as you can see that's a really nice tight join. I had to force that in uh, some areas I hit it in with a hammer. The first rail is a housing joint and the one on top is actually just kind of sitting into a pocket, it's not actually housed all the way around. So um, it's the glue just holding it in. Glue, if it's a nice join and it's uh, flat surfaces, is stronger than the wood, so I'm not worried about this tray coming apart. And as you can see there, I put a clamp in the middle to squeeze all those layers down. Where the clamp is, those layers get really tight, so if you did this by curving and steaming those layers out, it would be very difficult to sand those gaps but I pre-sanded all of those layers before I glued it together, so I don't need to worry about that small area. Now I put a coving bit in the spindle moulder, and that is to shape the underside of the handle. So I did the outside on the belt sander, and the inside on the spindle moulder. It came out really nicely, I had to do a bit of sanding, uh, which I'm doing now at home. And I wanted to make sure to sand the whole tray, even the small gaps, I wanted to get in every area because uh, this is a piece that you're really you know coming into contact with uh, you're holding so every area needs to be smooth I don't want any sharp edges at all and once it's all sanded to 240 uh, it's time to apply a finish and I chose chestnut products lemon oil which has such a nice smell I can't tell you uh, it's perfect for boxes uh, for trays like this anything that uh, you come into contact with, you know, it has a really nice lemon scent. Now, it's not uh, water repellent, this finish. So later I added some chestnut products wax, which is water repellent, so uh, that's perfect for a tray like this. All right, so I hope you enjoyed watching me make it. These are the final shots of the tray. <laughs>